What's up guys, it's Shana and today we are in Nara Eco Ardens. Let's go! Today we are switching things up a little bit. We are going to check out the Nasi Lama properties where everybody loves. Just that in this format, it's a strata title project. And the benefit of this format is that you can take control of almost everything such as the facilities, the landscape, the security, the common areas and etc. And in Nara itself, there are two types of products. One will be the link houses that kind of look like semi-D. They did it in a very clever way. Then they also have this courtyard home. So it's like an apartment, a landed apartment format, which I really adore. <laughs> and this project is part of that Eco Ardens master plan where they have landed, they have high rise, they have commercials, they have the kind of the affordable series. They also launched their very new series called Ember. And this particular developer has always been very good in place making. They emphasize a lot on the entrance experience. So once you drive into the development, immediately you will feel that distinct difference between what's theirs and what's not. And how do they do it is via the landscape, the streetscapes, which includes the lampposts, the signboards, the architecture, the road weaves. All those are also brought into the housing design as well. And usually for landed properties, what we like are those linear, squarish layout, right? But the problem with that is not all lands are square or rectangle. So you tend to have this organic shape or those angular form of land at the edge of the boundary right so it's pretty common where developers will put facilities or garden space into those area itself at the edge of the development right now you have this triangle piece of land right because of the roads and the houses so what they put they put the substation here they put the feeder pillar here and since everyone don't like to be close to it so they just put it very far away and in this area as well so they included a futsal, also a basketball court at the edge. And just check out the hardscape and the landscape provided. So you have the bicycle parking, you have all these turfings. So now say you look at the street lamps, you look at the gentle drops between the road and the pavement. So it's very easy to build this, but to make it very gentle, is very very hard. Also part of the perks will be the security measures. Like these are the fences across the entire parcel and when I talk about parcel, so in that roundabout just now when we come into Nara, there will be one for Ember and one for another project. So all projects will have their very own facilities, very own set of security measures. And part of the measures also includes the double boom gate design because I kind of have a bad experience of people tailgating into a development itself. So the double boom gate, some people will see that, do you really need all this, right? Got so scary, man, community. Then when we are picking the unit of our choice, right? Because at the edge of the road, usually it's best that developers will put a howdy sack to it. And it's for security purposes, so only cars of residents of this road will be using this road. And here you can just look at the width from house to house. It's so far apart. Wow, and they're using pavers at the cowdy sack tar for the normal roads. Lah. And just by walking past this road itself, there are many houses that are going through the renovation phase, which is great. So these are usually people who are buying it for own state purposes. And the myth about strata houses not being able to be renovated or changed in terms of the facade, not entirely true. There'll be a set of templates or you just need to have approval from the management itself. So let's say I want to do the kitchen behind, I want to do my front porch, what can be done. Everybody has a say to it. If not, your neighbor just do up something, paint a whole house purple. You cannot say anything like that, it's also weird. So this is also to preserve the entire image, the entire higher flavor of the township itself. Whenever a visitor comes into the development, wow! And this will be the unit I'm gonna to check today. So this is the experience of why people prefer landed property. It's the connection between you and your car. Let's say I just park here. I move up, move in, I forget something, go up, come in, move grocery, bring my kit. It's just easier. So 
also on brochure, this is called the Garden Homes and some people advertise on the property portal as Semidi. Actually, it's not. It's still a link house because if you look into the floor plan, there's still a small connection of this that is actually connected between the whole house because once it's a semi-D then there will be a different setback requirements to be imposed already so this is somewhat like that in between product between a terrace house as well as a semi-D so you kind of have a garden inside and this is variation 3D or they call it type 3D la. so in total this is 2166 square feet and 4 bedrooms in total so the boundary from line to line will be 30 feet and the length of the unit will be 60 feet so it's 30 by 60 a rather squarish format and this will be your water meter your refuse then here you have a garden space of 2.6 meters in width then this is the car porch of 3.2 meters so the debate here will then be the length of this car porch so can you extend it or not that is up to the management's approval you have top floorings here you have windows in the front which is nice and this will be the main door so the first thing i wish is that there could be another platform so the slope can be a little bit more gentle or you can just put it as a ramp to go up so this will be the unit itself and from the car porch going in this will be the living and there will be a nook here and this will be the garden that's why it's called a garden home some is attached to the back some is attached to the front it depends which one you like and the center will be the dining then the kitchen at the back connecting to a storeroom so that's pretty useful you have the bedroom at the ground floor a common bathroom and going upstairs there will be three bedrooms upstairs and you can see bedroom two bedroom three both of them have their ensuite bathroom that's so luxurious the best thing about this layout is bedroom three here also gets to have window in the center because of the void created here Okay, so that's the benefit. All the toilets suddenly can be placed in the center and that opens up the entire 30 feet of width absolutely for the principal bedroom. And coming into the unit, this will be the foyer and the width is 1.1 meters. This will be where we put the side tables to drop your keys. And coming into the space, this will be the living connecting to the dining. And this will be the access to the staircase going upwards. And what is very obvious here, it seems very, very spacious. Most likely it's because of the very, very high ceiling. So it's 3.5 meters in height. And it's a good thing, also a bad thing. Because that normal ceiling height that a lot of cloth providers will have in stocks are usually the standard dimensions, such as 3 meters, 2.8. You can always customize it shorter, but the extra that's beyond 3 meters is going to need some customization. And for that customization, it's going to be pretty expensive. Also, if you are getting a landed property, windows are crucial. Daylight actually determines the internal space quality of the house. Plus, with a void space, and suddenly you have an extra facade within the house itself. So, there will be extra cost for curtains as well. But what's cool about this unit is this is that very rare attempt for the makeover guys to furnish a landed property. If you look into the property portal today, this property is going for 1.35 million in selling price. And I guess it's pretty close to the price that they bought three years ago. But in terms of asking rental price, it's 6,000 per month. So from the foyer, this is the living space and there's this nook of space in between two big windows like this. This then requires some space planning. I think it's a perfect reading corner. It will also make a great place for a kid's play area too because it's so bright. But if you don't know how to design yourself, then this is gonna be a problem actually because many may think like, huh, why an extra space like that? Then why must I have a garden here? Because it also means that it's taking away space from your main built area. Why? Why not just concrete it all and make it as your floor area? It's always a debate. Lah. And this area for a normal terrace house is all built up. Then suddenly, people will have the imagination of what if all this is just that conventional form of house, right? It's going to be so huge. 
This is an absolute waste of space. In that form of argument, then it's a debate between quantity of space versus quality of space. Like if you were to extend the entire 30 feet altogether, yes, the living space and the dining space is going to be humongous. But your six seater is still six seater, matakan, because of the space being bigger, you put a 12 seater. Then suddenly you have a lot of white space going on and it's not as pleasant because you will actually lose out in ventilation, lose out in daylightings. And those are the common issues for terrace houses actually. For a conventional terrace house, the only opening will be the front and the back. Occasionally, you have one in the middle whenever the width is big enough. So for this design, that's the option where it's 30 feet. So you can actually open up a void in the center to have an extra facade for the internal space. Suddenly, it feels like a semi-D. Well, not really in terms of quantity of size, but in terms of opening. You kind of have that half stretch of open facade. As a result, what you'll get is this amazing window next to your study area or next to your dining area. And just imagine if that is turfed up nicely, you can have a water feature. It's going to look very nice and after having this table you still have a lot of space and something to point out here i really enjoy the uh, structural design so it's done in a very minimal non-invasive manner because you look at the size of the beams it's just very gentle and it ties nicely to the width of the wall then moving on this will be the common bathroom and this is another debate that some of the residents that they just saw me just now they kind of share with me about their frustration. Again, some like it, some don't. It's really up to personal preferences, but what they are just trying to do is to highlight the shower area and to add a dimension to it. But I like that there's a ramp in. So this is very gentle, but how I wish they could just add the ramp here as well. Right, just use up the same treatment. Now. Then for basin, you have Sorrento. For WC, you have Sorrento and this will be the only bathroom without access to the external wall so they need a ventilation system here Next to the bathroom, this will be the ground floor bedroom and this is very very important especially when we have three generations living together so this usually will be for the elderly and that's a catchphrase here if it's for my parents, if it's for elderly, right, all the little slopes or ramps between floor levels, right, those will be extremely helpful. Even the door, you can just add in a little bit or extra one feet in, right? It's gonna make a huge difference. So the width from wall to wall is 3.3 meters. This is 3.1 meters. So it's very, very spacious. And the opening is also huge connecting to the jogging pathways that runs across the entire development. So this will be the fencing around the development. And next to the room, this will be the kitchen itself and it's huge. This is what we talk about also whenever you have a landed property, the cost of your kitchen cabinets is going to be... Oof. This is where you have your breakfast counter, then you have your working area here. And these are all done by the team. You have your hood and hop here, so it's a preference thing or your budget thing whether you want to add on another stretch of cabinet on top with this kind of layout of internal facade as we call it the cooking experience here will be very very nice instead of facing the back now you can actually face your own private garden especially when you have kids where right, you can just peep outside plus they also provide full tiles up floor to ceiling for the kitchen area next to that then will be your yard space and this is a store room and out here this will be the internal courtyard and that will be the neighbor already so now it's actually raining what are the odds and this is going to be the experience as well this is when you get to feel the intimacy between the external and indoor relationship that is very very nice and this seems to be an easy way out where you just put pebbles uh, so you can actually put in turfing it's a very nice outdoor twist in your house itself and then this will be the gate going out to the jogging pathway connecting to the rest of the development Upstairs, this is a 1.1 meters width staircase, full house, and you have the handrail on the side here. And I like the chamfer detail. Coming upstairs, the entire flooring will be this kind of laminated timber, and I like this little detail where you have another ventilation outlet for the hot air within the unit. Two bedrooms here, one in the center and one at the end. 
And this is pretty peculiar because this is only possible when you have this internal wall. You know, a room like this would not be possible at all. But look at this one, the window panel is so generous. Also because of the width of that 30 feet for the house, right, they can accommodate this 3 meters room, including a corridor and the stairs and still have a space for void. And the only problem now is you will have this overlooking issue. Lah. Because from window to window, hello, right? So you will need to have curtains or window tints. Moving on, this will be the ensuite bathroom for the room. And the same comment goes for the shower area. The rest are pretty standard full height wall tiles, shower, Sorrento basin, and WC, and a small window here. I think this is added by the team, not directly from the developer. But I like this detail of having the pebble wash detail here. It's a very nice combination between the timber and the tile area. But this is always a wet area. Moving on, this will be the second bedroom upstairs. And this is as good as a junior suite because of the size, the window and the ensuite bathroom. So the width is 3.5 by 4 meters. But now it seems pretty big because of the lack of wardrobe last. If it's for our own use purpose, right? I don't think this is the only wardrobe that people will build. They will go full fledged all the way. That's why you need a space as big as this for own stay purposes. Lah. And midway just now there was a neighbor that came over and say hi, inviting us to go over to his house. And once they see the design, eh, why is so empty? And the main difference the owner wants to rent it out first. Then this will be the ensuite Bathroom, similar spec, Sorrento Basin, WC And last but not least, this is the principal bedroom From here, all the way to there The entire 30 feet is used up for your principal bedroom And it's such a luxury But again, if it's for your own stay, right? So half of it or more than half of it will be the walk-in wardrobe for your wife We need to include also a dressing table for her then our little corner is just there. <laughs> so a king size bed here looks so small. Along with a 3.2 meter ceiling height, right? Look at this space. Wow. And this is less than half of the entire room. <laughs> Crazy. <laughs> you will actually get tired from taking a towel from your bed. Hey, get a t-shirt. Wow, so far. And then last but not least, this will be the principal bedroom. And how I wish it could be a little bit more extensive But ultimately this is a link house So similar specs right, for the entire bathroom Well this one got shower screen And the window connected to the internal courtyard And walking out from the house Sometimes for projects like this right we are actually paying more than what's within that 30 to 60 feet. It's the environment that comes along with the development. So in this one, we also have this common space that we spoke about just now. This will be the places where you can exercise a little bit and the landscapes are all part of the maintenance fees that a lot of people are kind of reluctant to pay. But ultimately, if you understand what you are paying for and why you are paying it, it suddenly makes sense. So these are actually part of what you are buying. And we have the signature of the developer to create spaces like this for you to take pictures. It also becomes a focal point whenever you look out from your window. But again, you look at the boundary, this will be the main parcel of this owner and this will be the common areas that is maintained by everyone else. And you can look at the cul-de-sac there, cul-de-sac there. So the cul-de-sacs also allowed internal walkways in between houses. All of this will be connected to the clubhouse eventually. And if you pay attention, right, there's actually slopes and that adds more character. Then right outside, you can already see the lake that it's the boundary. And right opposite that will be the shop houses and it's pretty matured already which is great and that was a very important point for me when i was making the decision to buy one of the units here <laughs> ultimately i want to go out for lunch it needs to be quick man, right Gao team yeah also when we're looking into landed developments in the future what's going to be the language will be all these like the boundaries the cctvs 
the street lamps, the experience of walking around the common areas, distance and privacy between houses. Generally places for you to enjoy with your family. What a luxury of having this amount of space just for you to just chill around. So here you have a mixture of wading pool with the lap pool but they made it into one whole piece so you have that visual in back but I don't like this this is borderline dangerous especially for kids right, who just miss a step then this will be the gym room next to the pool and this will be the sunken deck here also you will have a kids playground at the end next to the pool then you have a barbecue area in the center of the pool very nice spot here you have a deck you also have a function hall up for you to rent And we have a clubhouse like that, basically weekends are pretty exciting. Plus, within this area itself, you also have the Satya City Mall. The entire surroundings are matured, so you also have the Tembi School. And I guess that's about it for now. Uh, it's now time for Sean's Take 3 on 3. And now we are at Arden's Lab. But there's a mixture of commercial activities. So they have the grocer here, the kindergarten, pubs for drinking, F&B outlets. The football field during some nights are really really active and the main selling point still will be the lake and the park around it lah. So a lot of people actually come here for wedding photo shoots. Hey guys, halfway editing through this video, there's something wrong with the file but ultimately the very first point is the execution ability of the developer. Whenever you go to KL, you go to JB, you go to Penang, the quality of all spaces are very consistent. The level of execution is up to a certain level that is so good and it's very very impressive. From the entrance statement, the landscape strategy, the unit layout design, the maintenance of it, how they manage community, how they build community using the lab series and all. All of those are just really, really impressive. The last thing that I want to bring up will be the design of the unit itself. I like that Inara has a nice mixture between the courtyard homes and the garden homes. And I also like the risk that the development team took with the garden homes design. It's not your usual link houses. It will be so easy and so safe to sell the normal conventional terrace house but they choose to go with a garden home concept where there's a void within the unit and it causes a lot of debate like why waste the space to use it as a void as a garden why outside not enough garden man you must put in so much garden for what right might as well just concrete it there's a debate always between quality of space and quantity of space because of the extra void suddenly the dining space becomes so presentable full of ventilation and daylighting the middle bedroom upstairs can actually have access to daylighting and ventilation and that allows the toilet of the principal bedroom to be chucked inside so the entire facade line can be preserved entirely for the principal bedroom which is humongous it's 30 feet then on top of that will be that high level of execution for a landed property where everything is linear then everything is done in a cul-de-sac manner there won't be units facing a junction house to house distance is amazingly wide along with the clubhouse design the basketball court facilities common areas are chucked really nicely in order to camouflage all the not so nice things Again, the usual high level of execution by the team. And for the three things I don't like, number one would actually be the price itself. Because I think when they were selling, it's already 1.3. The corner lot, which is the owner, that came and say hi just now. He bought it at 1.6, 1.7 ish. Ultimately, it's for a link house designed differently. And when I say expensive, it's in comparison to whatever that is available within proximity, which is that double story terrace house, the usual layout of 22, 75 or 24, 75 feet. Those are around seven to 800,000. Even the corner lots there are barely around a million. But here, an intermediate lot is already 1.3 to 1.4 million. That's a bit steep, but it's still sold out. Right? People are very receptive, people here love the concept. They love the different unique selling points that the project is giving, the township is giving. So interesting, right? The second thing I don't like or might have concern of will be the only way out, which is the NKVE highway. So this place kind of grow because of the highway, but when the township here begins to take place, the only inlet and outlet, well, the main inlet and outlet seems to be the NKVE highway. 
on the peak hours that would be the concern for most of the residents here if they are heading over to KL itself then the last thing will be certain design elements within the unit itself first of all would be the feature wall around the tiles like just now I spoke to two residents themselves they told me they didn't like it but they also shared with me some other neighbors they love it some actually redo the entire toilet so that is very up to personal preferences I don't know but I wish there could be a gentle ramp across different floor levels across the building so from the entrance itself I think if there could be an apron an extra apron or there could be a ramp up that would be very very nice or the step could be a little bit more gentle I, I would actually like that and that applies to all the bathrooms as well also within the clubhouse itself what's very dangerous would be the walkway around the swimming pool I think that step there is very very dangerous there needs to be some handrail or something and this will also sound weird will be the ceiling height I think 3.3 is good enough really like the fact that they're giving 3.5 for the ground floor right because of that height everything in the unit needs to be customized like the curtains all needs to be customized and that's a very big cost for owners if you wish to renovate the house completely last. and because of that height also in maintenance if you want to change the light bulb it's also more difficult and this is always the debate i want the ceiling to be high but just high enough and i guess that's all for today it's very cool to check out well my first experience of the makeover guys doing lander properties is a very new thing for me also it's very cool to check out the neighborhood that i hope i can move in within three years time but the biggest debate here for a lot of people is still the strata living versus the individual title because of the maintenance do you really need the clubhouse do you really need the security do you necessarily need the landscape to be that perfect I'm actually willing to pay for all those kind of things and if you don't really fancy them you can always go back to the conventional individual title houses around there's a lot there's actually an abundance here right and with that thank you very much for watching if you really like this episode like it share and even subscribe for more information like this until next time this is Sean Tan Ciao